My name is Vic Wilkerson. I'm with the uh, RFFE working group within the MIPI Alliance. And wanted to come in today to talk about a few topics of potential interest for RFFE users and implementers. Um, just for background purposes, um, if anyone was wondering, um, <clears throat> the reason I entitled this, uh, or we entitled this about 1.10 uh, was that that is the latest package of documents released on the RFFE standard from the Midby Alliance. Um, it includes a specification, an application note, and a PICS document, um, uh, all updated from the original 1.00 to a 1.10 release late uh, in December of 2011. Um, changes from 1.00 to 1.10 were fairly minimal, certainly from a technical standpoint, and involved primarily uh, additional clarification materials. Um, and as such, it's not felt that uh, uh, implementations would be impacted as long as people were, were interpreting the original specification properly. But uh, from feedback from the user community as well as, as um, from the, within the working group itself, it was felt that um, it would be good and useful for, for the uh, entire user community for us to update and clarify sections of the specification um, and certainly the application note, and in particular the FAQ section of that. Um, I will note that uh, changes between 1.0 and 1.10 to the picks were very minimal, and that's a testament to the fact that, that very little actual technical changes were made in the specification. So uh, there are more details about the actual changes uh, within one of the FAQs. That's one of the new FAQs that we added, actually. Um, uh, and so I invite anyone to take a look at that if you, if you uh, want to get exact details of what, what was changed between the two. But for the moment, let's just say that uh, everything that I'm prepared to talk about after this pertains to uh, both versions of the specification. So let's get on with it. Um, first uh, topic that I want to talk about a little bit was the command sequence types that are present in RFFE and the usage that we see of them so far. Um, just in list form, uh, RFFE has um, all of the messages are uh, entities that are called command sequences, and they're distinct messages that begin and end on an RFFE bus implementation. Um, there are seven command sequences available. Um, they fall into four general categories that are, that are listed here. Uh, register zero write, um, the workhorse, the register read or write, um, and then the extended read, read and write and the extended register read write long. So uh, one of the ways that, that these differ or maybe differentiated is, is the range of uh, memory that's available um, within an application that is addressable by each of these command sequences. So that's one of the ways that you measure their reason for, for being uh, or existing in the command set. So taking a quick look, this, uh, this is in the spec, or a version of this is in the spec. But the, um, as you can see, the uh, memory scope of the register zero write is just register zero. Um, the register write and read address <coughs> what I'll call, say, the basic RFFE um, memory space, which is up through 1F. Um, if somebody wants to reach higher to uh, full range, or we didn't really name the ranges, but up to uh, FF, they would use or must use the extended register read and write. Um, and to reach the full memory content addressable by the RFFE uh, interface specification, you would use the extended long as the only uh, command sequence that will get you to 64K. So that's one way to look at, at uh, why those command sequences uh, exist. 
Another way is to talk about them or think about them in terms of, of their length, which uh, generally relates also to complexity. Um, and again, they would be rank ordered the same from simplest or shortest to uh, the longest. Um, in applications for RFFE, the, uh, the time available for a command often has a lot to do with the command that's going to be chosen. And so that's, that's another differentiator for, for the use of the different commands at specific points in time. So if we take a look at, um, you won't find this in the spec. <clears throat> the spec generally has um, completely specified um, command sequence diagrams for each and every one of the command sequence types. But this is a generalized one. And normally, you would accompany it with a table, but that would make us uh, way too busy. So, um, but in general, a command sequence um, consists of an SSC, which is the opening uh, entity for, for a command sequence. It signals the beginning, um, followed by a command frame, which consists of 12 <coughs> bits and a parity bit. Um, in some cases, a bus park cycle or turnaround is placed there uh, in the case where a, a switch in bus driver occurs, followed by either 0, 1, 2, or up to uh, a, a number of data or address frames, all of which are 8 bits with a parity bit. And every command sequence is, is ended with a bus park cycle, so that marks or demarks the end of, of a command sequence. Um, and so every message or telegram on the bus is signaled, excuse me, is signaled with um, some sequence of these commands and these command or these command or frames, these frames only. So what I really wanted to talk about <coughs> about that um, uh, first, we'll do a summary. Uh, as as you saw, the the fastest, of course, is the register zero write. Downside is that that can only do a write, and it only reaches six or seven of the eight bits available in register zero. Um, as I said, the register read and write are really the workhorses. Um, they operate over the basic address range of the, of the interface. And um, they operate on one address location at a time. Um, with an extended, you can operate on multiple locations, um, which is another differentiator, as well as the memory range and the length of the command sequence. <coughs> So this actually enables you to write or read up to 16 bytes um, or address locations within RFP memory space. So since the release of, of 1.0, looking at the, the uptake, which has been tremendous in the market, I must say, um, out there, to the best of our knowledge, it appears like <coughs> the register zero write the read, write, basic commands, and the extended register read, write, um, are all in fairly heavy use, or, or people are planning to use them. The extended long register read, write have not seen tremendous use to date, but uh, in the future, um, when me if memory needs for certain applications grow, the space is available. So it's a future safe command option. Another topic that's, that's of interest to anyone that's, that's using and actually deploying RFFE is um, the fact that applications are, because RFFE is based on byte uh, register locations for each address, <coughs> it was desired to uh, limit an entity called the product ID, which is basically assigned by each device manufacturer to be able to differentiate their devices. And this is useful for a number of things, not only for a user to be able to, to via software, be able to discern which of your devices is in their system, but it's also used in reprogramming of some of the, the um, identifiers on a given instantiation of a bus, as, as we'll see in a minute. 